Hey everybody, I'm Ebony. This is Ebony's Creativity. Thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. For today's video, I wanted to challenge myself to see if I could do a complete flip in 24 hours. I didn't want to cheat it by doing a little small piece. I wanted to do a full scale piece, the same size that I would normally do. And I also wanted to incorporate a fallish type of color, a more bolder color than what I would normally go for. So that is what we're doing today. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Thumbs up the video if you are enjoying it at any point. Thank you so much for watching and let's hop right into the flip. Here's today's piece which I did get for free from Facebook Marketplace. As you can see, it is missing the two doors that were previously on the front, but other than that, it is in pretty decent shape. It is a piece by Brayhill, and you can kind of see that it's well made, the drawers are locked in, and it's solid wood furniture. The inside is very clean, the drawers are all sliding really smoothly, so no real damage on this piece, which is a beautiful thing compared to what we normally get. As I said in my intro, I am going to try to do this flip in 24 hours, so we will see how that works. It is Saturday at 1 and I am starting now by removing the hardware from all of the drawers. There were a lot of hardware on this piece and I had to remove two screws per each one, so that took me about 20 minutes. Now I am going to start wood filling in the areas where the doors previously were. And that is just going to help me get a more seamless look and make it less obvious that doors were missing. I am using the Gorilla Wood Filler and I will not go back to the plastic wood filler because I like this one so much more. Since there were only 8 screw holes to fill, that only took about 10 minutes. I always like to do a thorough job of cleaning my hardware because I know that that is the part that gets touched the most on a dresser. So I am going to go ahead and scrub these up. I am using Dawn Dish Soap, Lysol Cleaner, as well as warm water. And after scrubbing all of those, I am going to be placing them in my bucket, which is filled with vinegar. Since I am being conscious of the time for this flip, I'm going to move on while those soak. I'm going to go ahead and start sanding with a 220 grit sandpaper and my orbital sander. Typically sanding is the step that takes me the longest, but surprisingly in this flip, that was not the case. So stay tuned to see what else I encountered on this flip. But the reason that I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper is because I find that that creates less work for me in the end. I could have started with a lower number which would have meant a rougher piece of sandpaper. However, I just like to do this part slow and steady even though this is solid wood. I find that just doing it slow and steady with the higher number creates less work for me. When you use a lower number, you're going to have to do steps up. So maybe go from like 120, 180, 220. So I just start at 220 and I find that I am able to achieve a smooth result by only sanding once. If you are a regular watcher of my channel, you know that I'm always trying to push myself and attempting new things here on the channel. I will be attempting to do transfer, also working with dark wax as I have never done either before. If there are any things that you would like to see me try, please leave me a comment and let me know what they are. So back to the flip here, I'm still sanding and I had to break out my Dremel to get into these hard to reach areas. I started sanding this at 2 o'clock and I sanded and sanded and sanded for three and a half hours. So right now it is a 5.30. And here is how this piece looked all sanded down. I want to make it a little less obvious that there were previously doors here, so I'm going to do a few things to make that possible. First, I'm going to start out by removing some of the trim that would have held the doors in place. Next, I am going to remove these little magnetic door stoppers. At this point, my hardware had been soaking in the vinegar for hours, so I'm going to take a piece of steel wool and go ahead and scrub those down. I usually use the old toothbrush to do this, but I decided to try the steel wool this time, and I gotta say it did a wonderful job. Up next, I'm going in with some Dawn and warm water, and I'm just going to be giving everything a really good wipe down. Next, I've strained some Ben Shellac Base Primer into my Home Right Spray Gun, and I'm going to be doing two coats of this primer. I'll call it a day after I finish priming. Here is some footage the next day when two coats were applied and dry. 
I thought this color would be really appropriate for fall and so I wanted to try it out. It's Chesler by Fusion and I have my Old Faithful Klingon 045 brush here too. On this first coat, my goal is just to get some paint onto the piece. I'm not particularly worried about brush strokes or any of that. I'm just trying to make sure that I cover the entire piece with paint and I want to make sure that I get into those recessed areas so I'm pushing the brush forward when I get into those little cracks because I want to make sure that I cover everything completely. So I'm not really worried about going in the same direction. Although I tend to do that, I'm not doing it purposefully. I'm just trying to get paint on for my first coat. Some of you may wonder why I am not using my spray gun for this. Honestly, I wish I had, but I have not gotten the settings correct to apply paint. I've tried it before and it came out really terribly and I know what kind of result to expect when I hand paint. So that is why I'm hand painting. I want to work with my gun some more before I can feel comfortable with getting a nice smooth result using that. But I have found it very useful for primers as well as for top coats. So I continue to use it for that. I just don't trust it with the paint at this point. But I know it's operator error because I really do like this spray gun. And if you need a cheap spray gun, check out my, the one that I have. You can find it on Amazon. I think Chesler is a newer color that Fusion has. I always use Fusion paints here on the channel. But the more I used this color, the more I noticed that it seemed a lot different from the previous colors that I had tried. This one, I could tell I was going to need to use a lot more paint than I have used on previous projects. Fusion is usually a two and a half coat paint for me. And when I say half coat, it's just kind of touch ups, mostly water, just a little bit of paint just to smooth out any imperfections in the coats. But I can already tell this is not going to be two coat coverage or two and a half. I hope they have not changed the formula, but here is how this looked after one full coat. While I'm waiting for my paint to dry, I'm going to go in with this wood conditioner by Minwax. I'm going to rub on a generous layer of that in the direction of the wood grain, wipe off any excess, and then I'm going to go in with my stain and briar smoke and do two coats of that. I really love this stain color. It is a beautiful mix of brown and gray. Again, I'm just using a tack cloth and wiping in the direction of the wood grain. This stain does dry in one hour. Here I am going into my second coat of paint and as you can see I've already done this side of this and it is just very splotchy and not covering well at all. I spent 30 minutes doing the second coat and then I headed over to the hardware store. I had this gentleman rip down a plyboard for me so that I could make my shelves. When I got home I used my air nailer to affix the boards into place. And here's how that looked once it was completed. So even though this video was supposed to go up on Sunday, it is now Monday and I am top coating. It did not go up because unfortunately I have a plumbing issue in my house that I had to look into, but now I'm back flipping. So I am just using my favorite top coats for stains, which is the Men Wax Wipe On Poly. And I've really grown a liking to wipe on top coats, just very convenient and I can do them inside my house with very little mess. So I love them. Speaking of wipe on top coats, if you're a regular watcher here, you're probably expecting me to pull out the Fusion wipe on satin top coat, but I am not doing that this video. I am trying something new, which is top coating using the Wise Owl Furniture South. I'm applying this with a Dollar Tree car polisher pad, and I really love these for top coats. I love this furniture salve. It smells amazing, and the directions say it can be used as an alternative to furniture wax, so we are testing that out today. Once that was dry, I went ahead and reapplied all the hardware. When I am doing these flips, sometimes it feels like it is taking forever. And this time I was simultaneously dealing with a plumbing issue, so I thought it would never end. So this was a fun little experiment to see how long it would take me to complete this. So without further ado, here is the final finished product. Is your flipping time faster or slower than mine? Leave me a comment and let me know. If you enjoyed the video at all, please leave a thumbs up. If you have video ideas, please leave me a comment and let me know how you think this project turned out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will talk to you all in my next flip. Bye guys.
If you have the time, please select another one of my videos to watch from the choices on your screen or in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching.